Well, 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 welcome back to The Megan Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, I want to talk about my favorite movies. Let's get into it. The Megan Show. I know this is a little bit of a different topic for my channel, not about tattoos or makeup, but maybe this is a way you guys can get to know me a little bit better, uh, getting a peek into my favorite movie list. So the first one is my absolute favorite of all time, a childhood favorite, a Jack Black classic, it's School of Rock. This is my absolute favorite movie of all time. It came out at a perfect time for me, 2003. I was a little kid, um, how old was I? Like 10 or no? Oh. I do math. Seven. What's wrong with me? I was probably watching it from ages seven to twelve quite a bit, um, especially having the DVD right in that Honda Odyssey, you know, on the way to the beach, I'm watching it multiple times a year. Um, and of course now I watch it on TV when it comes on. Um, this is a classic, um, you know, music related movie. And I'm a music kid at heart. Um, that might not be something you guys know about me, but I grew up singing all the time. I was a music major at one time in college before I transitioned onto my whole other life. Um, but music was my whole life. And especially at that young age, a movie all about learning about music and kids who can play music extremely well. I mean, it was so iconic. I mean, the DVD, I can still picture it. They had the kids commentary, like, you know, the kids watching the movie and talking about it as the movie was playing. And to me as a little kid, that was so exciting because the kids were like right around my age um, when I'm watching the movie. So it was perfect role models to look up to. Iconic Miranda Cosgrove, um, definitely, you know, the guy that played um, Freddie Jones, RIP. Um, so, so sad that that actor passed away a couple years ago. Um, but so many kid actors, the uh, one girl, Alicia Allen from Disney, um, I think she was on Barney at the time. Lots of, of those kid actors, so iconic. I mean, that movie was so good. I can pretty much quote that entire movie. I'm always doing the read between the lines, <laughs> Jack Black thing, Joan Cusack throughout that movie. Just perfect as the principal, the uh, stick it to demand neosis when they were all dying of the disease <laughs> for them to get into the Battle of the Bands. I mean, just, I love everything about that movie. Also, uh, Mike White, who, you know, now is on to White Lotus, um, his role in that movie is so good. Sarah Silverman as the bitchy girlfriend is just, uh, it's just so good. The kids playing the music is so, so iconic. I mean, I love that movie to death. I will always love it. Um, when I hear the songs from that movie on the radio, you know, all of the songs in that movie are classic, classic rock songs. And when I hear them today, I'm still thinking of School of Rock first rather than knowing them as the iconic 70s and 80s classic rock songs. So it was perfect too, to learn that at that young age, um, to learn about those classic rock songs um, and gave me a history lesson about music at a young age. So. I definitely love that movie. It came out at the perfect time for me, um, and I love it to this day. It still holds up. It's so funny and silly, and it honestly brings a tear to my eye at the end. You know, the kids when they're screaming for the encore. Oh, so good. Absolutely love it. A more recent favorite I want to touch on is Arrival, the Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner alien movie. Um, that one is so unique and interesting with the linguistics of it all. I am super into linguistics and word origin. Um, in college, I almost steered into that direction of taking linguistics courses and even considering, well, I, I was going to say even considering that as a major, but I really wasn't. It was just one singular um, extra um, curricular, that's not the right word, what do they call it? Like um, general curriculum class um, that I wanted to take but I couldn't align it with my schedule at that time or else I maybe would know even more about linguistics to this day. But Arrival is such a cool movie, especially with the time jump type of thing that the aliens do in that movie. Uh, I should have said spoilers um, for all this, but that movie came out close to 10 years ago, maybe about eight years ago, I would say. Um, I saw it in college for the first time and it's just so unique. The way time works for those aliens is it's not linear. Um, so there's like a lot of time back and forth. And it honestly took me a couple of watches for that movie to really understand the time jump type of thing um, where Amy Adams would see her future before it would happen um, because the aliens were like influencing her or showing her the way they learn and work and stuff. So 
that movie is so cool. I mean, I'm not into necessarily horror, um, sci-fi. I mean, I would not consider Arrival horror at all, but I'm meaning more like Alien, the horror type of movies called Alien and, you know, all those other where the aliens are scary and crazy looking. This, these aliens were just huge beings in their, like, smoky, cloudy water <laughs> that they had them in and their giant monolith looking tank things that these aliens would just drop down into all these different cities um, so that you never, you know, they didn't have a face. They were just like these huge, maybe tall squid-like you could compare them to, you know, lots of legs, but just huge black beings with not a face. Um, so, and then they, you know, would squirt out their like um, letters uh, in, were just words that were in the shape of like circles with little bits on them. <laughs> that was their language. And you know, Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner are working to, they eventually learn the language. And oh God, that is just so interesting to me. I love it. Again, the, the way they structured that movie is so interesting with, you know, Amy seeing her future and past and all of that. It was just super well done, super well done. Absolutely recommend Arrival if you haven't seen it. I kind of spoiled a lot of it, but um, super, super cool movie. That is one of my favorite movies of the last 10 years. Jumping back to kids movies, I wanna to touch on some of my favorite Pixar movies. Of course, I have a lot of favorite Disney movies too, but I think that list is a little long. And honestly, I'm not super, super well-versed on specifically all the Disney movies, meaning like all of the um, princess movies. Of course, I've seen them, but those didn't leave as much of an impact on me as a lot of the Pixar movies, to be honest. You know, of course, Toy Story, super iconic, Wally definitely like a underrated mention. Um, I don't, I don't think Wally gets enough credit to be honest. I mean, Wally, the first maybe hour, hour and a half, not a word spoken because it's just little Wally trying to make it in the apocalyptic world. And then, you know, Eve comes along. And then of course, then towards the end with the humans in their little pods and they're just riding around in their scary dystopian future that hopefully we will never actually get to, but sometimes it looks a little scary that we are headed in that direction, but it's neither here nor there. But Wally is an absolute classic, so heartwarming. I remember seeing it in theaters. It came out when I was in middle school and my mom hated it so much <laughs> because there was no talking for a lot of it, but it is so heartwarming when you're really, you know, paying attention to the story. And it's, I mean, maybe heartwarming isn't the word because it's very dystopian in some ways um, with how the humans are living and all of that but Wally is an absolute like classic classic Pixar for me but Finding Nemo definitely takes the top spot for Pixar in my opinion that came out I think in 2003 similar to School of Rock um, perfect young age to love Finding Nemo I think they did a good job with Finding Dory um, took them a long time but that was really cute you know let's not talk about Ellen generous too much but Finding Dory is very cute they did a good job with creating her story with her, the, the baby Dory, stop. Cutest thing on freaking earth, like that, how precious is that? With the, her parents doing the pebbles and forever. No, I will cry right now, <laughs> dude. Like that, uh, I probably wept so bad the first time, especially at the end of Finding Dory with like the truck launching off the road into the ocean and all the fish finally getting free. Dude, I will cry right now, literally. But anyway, back to Finding Nemo, a classic Pixar. I mean, the story with little Nemo's fin. Oh my God, dude, like I, but I mean, I'm sentimental. So like I get touched too easily when it comes to like, I mean, I'm the perfect audience for movies that want to get the tearjerker moment because I will cry. I will cry right now at all of that. So Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, some of my favorite Pixar movies. Also want to mention The Incredibles. Incredibles 1 and 2, the first one, really love that one. Incredibles 2, pretty good. I think that was a pretty good sequel. Again, one of those was many, many years in between. I remember when that one came out, people zooming in on like the stills of it, seeing the like extreme detail of like the fabric. Edna Mode being one of the most classic characters in cartoon history, in my opinion. Um, the Incredibles is a great, great Pixar um, two movies right there. Jumping back to more recent movies, I love the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the more recent one from the 2010s era um, with Caesar in charge. You know, the first one with James Franco raising Caesar in the lab, 
the second one where they have a battle um, among the apes, but also with humans still messing with, with them. And then that third one is definitely my favorite in the trilogy with Woody Harrelson um, being the jackass that he can easily play. Um, but that movie is so great. I love Caesar. I love Maurice the orangutan. Just, oh my gosh. The, and something I want to point out, um, because I did just see the most recent one that just came out this month that takes place a few generations after Caesar. So they do talk about that, you know, Caesar passes away at the end of the third one. At the beginning of this new one, they have, again, spoilers, spoilers, since this is a recent movie. If you don't want the most recent Planet of the Apes to be spoiled, maybe skip off this part of the video. So in the most recent Planet of the Apes, they, you know, mention that Caesar has passed away. They kind of have their little funeral for him. And then they flash on the screen that now the rest of the movie takes place a few generations after Caesar. So all of these new apes don't remember Caesar, don't know nothing about Caesar because, you know, again, that's been however many years ago for these apes. Well, let me tell you, these apes speak perfect English. So <laughs> the way it is in the trilogy, the most recent trilogy, the apes are doing a lot of sign language and they're occasionally speaking words and it was impactful. I mean, you, and that's, that was on purpose, you know, when the humans would come along and like Caesar goes, no, you know, in that, I don't know if that's in the first or second movie, the humans are like, holy F, like <laughs> these apes are speaking. They're not speaking perfect English. They are occasionally saying a few words here or there. But they're mostly doing sign language to each other and that's great. Well, now, they have got these apes speaking perfect English better than any English I could speak. And it is jarring. It, <laughs> it is so jarring to see <laughs> these apes fully talking. And it just kind of cracked me up a little bit. It made it hard for me to get into it, to be honest. And there was a lot of world building in this new one too that, you know, kind of made it slow for me. And I didn't absolutely love this new one, if I'm being completely honest, but I definitely prefer the trilogy over this most recent one, but I get what they were going for. You know, this is maybe a new era and they want the apes to talk perfect English, but it just didn't quite do it for me. It kind of took me out of it. It was a little odd. So I will take Caesar and Maurice any day though. I watch them a lot when they come on TV. FX plays those movies quite a bit. That actually leads me into my next trilogy I want to mention is the Jurassic World recent trilogy. Now, on the other hand, where um, I, for the Planet of the Apes, I love that third one the most. For Jurassic World, I love the first one the most and don't love the second and third one nearly as much. Um, the first Jurassic World in 2015 with Chris Pratt and Dallas Bryce Howard, Bryce Dallas Howard, <laughs> sorry. Um, I love that first one. That was a great remake, in my opinion. I think they did a great job. You know, they put in a lot of different dinosaurs. Of course, the T-Rex is iconic. They've got the raptors and then that really uh, clever um, sea one. I can't think of the name of that one, but that huge sea uh, dinosaur um, that has, you know, the moment at the very end. Again, spoilers, um, but that, I really love that one. So again, a lot of interesting dinosaurs in that one. And I think that the story was was well done. You know, the huge park, how ornate and how exciting that park looked, um, you know, modern. They really made it in a modern way. Now, definitely want to mention the original trilogy, Jurassic Park trilogy is very iconic. Those are definitely up there in my favorites of movies of all time as well. Um, the first one, can't beat it. The second one with Jeff Goldblum being the main guy and um, Julianne Moore and Vince Vaughn. I like that one. The third one I like probably more than the second one. The third one with the little boy getting lost. Well, he's one little, maybe a teenager. And then William H. Macy and his wife are searching all over trying to find him. They find him and I love in the third one the big pterodactyl or pterodactyl cousin. I'm not sure if it's an, exactly a pterodactyl where they're on that suspension bridge and it's huge and it's, you know, fighting them and picks up the kid. That's pretty iconic. So the original Jurassic Park trilogy, I love the trilogy as a whole, whereas the newer trilogy, I only love that first one the most. I really thought they could have just chopped it off right there. They did not have to make a second and third one, but as with Hollywood, it was probably set up from the get-go that they were gonna make three of them. Another trilogy I wanna mention is the Men in Black trilogy. I love those movies. Now all three of those can stand alone. Those are all excellent. All of those different monsters and out of space, aliens and all of that are just iconic. Um, there's, you know, Tony Shalhoub. I don't know if that's in the first or second one where he plays a crazy looking guy. 
third one came out at a perfect time. I was in high school. Um, there was 10 years in between, I think, if I remember right. Um, so the second one maybe was about 2002-ish, and the third one was 2012. So I was 16 when that third one came out. And it was highly anticipated, I remember. And I love that one. That one left a big mark on me. Um, I still watch that one. I mean, I watch all three of them if they're on TV um, quite a bit. But that third one is where, you know, Will Smith has to go back in time. And then you see sexy Josh Brolin playing young Tommy Jones, you know, Agent what, K. Oh my God. <laughs> Josh Brolin, young in the 60s era. Mm, perfect. <laughs> and anyway, but Boris the animal, the perfect villain, you know, they've got two of them, the one with the arm blown off already and the one with two arms, you know, they're going back in time. Me and my sister to this day still joke about the ha 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 where he's like, <laughs> I hope you know what I mean, where he's like laughing on the Coney Island because like the two hippies are talking to him and they tell a joke and he, that's his attempt at laughing is ha 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 ha. <laughs> he like his mouth. My sister and I do that to each other to this day because it's just like an inside joke. But Men in Black 3, and again, perfect like sentimental ending with, you know, Will Smith finding out that his dad in the movie was killed uh, with, you know, Agent K trying to save him. And then, you know, Tommy Lee Jones is, ends up raising Will Smith's character in the movie from like five years old. And just, ugh. when I watched that at the time at 16, I was like, that was like a surprise ending. And it was just like so touching. Again, still cry to this day in that those ending scenes there and then Will Smith coming back to present day um, and then talking, you know, them kind of having a little moment of closure there and understanding with each other. Very sweet. Love that movie. Another time jump type of movie. Um, so maybe I'm into time jumps, but Men in Black, definitely love that entire trilogy. That is classic. That's gonna wrap it up for today's video. This was just a peek into some of my top favorite movies. Let me know down in the comments below some of your favorite movies and why. Thank you so much for watching The Megan Show. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.